Davis. Hi, my name is Angelina Miller. I work with Frederick County Government's Office of Sustainability and Environmental Resources. We partner with the Frederick County Libraries to provide informational videos. Today, we will have an informative session on brain gardens. Brain gardens are one of a variety of different stormwater best management practices that you can implement in your residential In addition to filtering out pollutants, some other benefits that rain gardens have include improving water quality, recharging groundwater, reducing flooding and drainage issues, and increasing biodiversity and wildlife habitat. So now that we've told you a little bit about what a rain garden is and some of the benefits it has, we'll go through how to construct one, how to install one, and then how to maintain one on your own property. you should locate an area within your property that is away from buildings, away from your utilities, and collects water either from runoff or a downspout. You can see on this site there is no downspout so it just collects the rain runoff. So we have one here which is connected to a downspout which you can do at your home. soil type, the size of your rain garden, and the depth of the rain garden. Take a sample of your soil to determine if it is clay, silt, or sand based on texture. This will be especially useful when determining the native plants that you will use in your garden. Determine the size you'll want to figure out the amount of water you want it to capture. The surface area of the rain garden should be 20 to 30 percent of the size of the drainage area. We will now go through the steps necessary to determine the size of the rain garden. The first step in the process is to calculate the area of roof that will drain to the rain garden. This is done by dividing the total roof area by the number of downspouts. The next step is to measure the impervious surfaces that will drain to your rain garden. This includes, but it's not limited to, driveways, patios, walkways, and sidewalks. Once you determine what the roof drainage and impervious areas are, add these two numbers together for your total impervious surface area. If you are capturing runoff from pervious surfaces such as your lawn, determine the surface area that will drain to the rain garden. If you need help determining the parts of your lawn that will drain to the garden, observe your property's runoff patterns during the next storm event. The next step is to decide on the depth of your ponding area. This depth is the distance from the top of the berm to the rain garden soil, not the mulch. It is recommended that the depth be between 6 and 12 inches. Once you have determined this number, look up the corresponding depth factor and record it on line 5 of the sizing worksheet. Next, we multiply the total impervious surface area in line 3 by the depth factor given by line 5 and the runoff estimator for impervious surfaces, which is 0.072. The runoff estimator is a number that estimates the proportion of rainfall that is actually likely to become surface runoff. After that, multiply the total pervious surface area given by line 4 by the depth factor from line 5 and the runoff estimator for pervious surfaces, which is 0.028. The final step in determining the area of your rain garden is to add lines 6 and 7 together. Whatever number you get will be recorded in square feet.
garden and should be deeper in depth. A rain garden typically consists of a ponding area, a slope perimeter, and a berm. The ponding area is where you plant your plants, and it is also the deepest part of the rain garden that allows rainwater to pool. The sloped perimeter is found within your garden and has some planting materials. The berm is the area that borders your garden and consists of plants that are tolerable to drought. When creating a site design for your rain garden, choose native plants that are most appropriate to your property. Some things to consider include soil type, soil moisture retention, drought resistance, and sun exposure. Due to the location of Frederick County, you are going to want to select native plants within the Piedmont region because they are acclimated to the growing conditions within the county. Here is a list of plants based on sun exposure for you to consider when designing your rain garden. Once you have determined the shape of your garden and outlined it, it's time to dig it out, sloping it a little bit on the sides. Of it. After determining the native plants that you would like to see in your rain garden, it's time to start planting. Be sure to loosen up the root systems before putting them into the ground, paying special attention to how you're laying it out. The plants that are more aquatic should be in the middle and the drier plants should move up along the edge. Some include gravel within their garden or boulders along the edges to help protect their rain garden against erosion. Once the plants are in the ground and you've added the finishing touches to make your garden your own, it's time to see it actually work. After a heavy rain, there should be about one inch of water in your rain garden that should last no more than two days. But if you're experiencing a drought and there hasn't been rain for a while, it's important to maintain your garden and water it to at least one inch per week. Maintenance of your rain garden is typically no different than other landscaped areas on your property. Some things to consider include removing invasives, removing weeds, and trimming your native plants as necessary. management practices like rain gardens can be your personal contribution to local flood reduction, cleaner water, healthier wildlife, and an improved environment for you and your community.